Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, he's good. Whew. You know, if, if, we, if we know how good he is, if we just got a, another, just another, this much more of how good he is, we'd, we'd have to shout right now because he's so good. He's, he's just good. I mean, he, he's, he's thinking of other good things that he wants for us right now. He's already said, I've already got them in place. How can I get them to him? How can I get them to receive them? Amen. Because he's just good. That's what he does. Amen? Yeah. Open your Bibles up to uh, Matthew 7. I wrote so many notes on my notes that I don't know where my notes end and start. Matthew 7. Glory to God. Matthew 7. Let's start around verse 15. Thank you, Lord. Matthew seven fifteen. Am I, am I cutting out every now and then on that? Thank you, Lord. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward, inwardly they are ravening wolves. Keep going. You shall know them by their fruits. You know, confusing messages should be known by what they produce. Amen? There's a lot of things out there in the world today. There's a lot of fine sounding arguments within the church even, but what you gotta look at is what fruit do they produce? And, and you know, a lot of people in our camps, they, they wanna look at other camps. No, you need to look at the camp you're in, <laughs> right? Remember what we talked about last year when the coach, when I, or last week when I talked about the coach that said make your block and quit worrying about his? Huh? That's what you got to do is we got to make our block. And then if we get our block done, we can help out and get somebody else's block. It's, it's good, to, good to block two people if you can, but you got to get yours first. Amen. If you let yours go and you block somebody else's, yours is back there killing the quarterback. Amen. And that's your coaching analogy for the day. <laughs> Glory to God. Make your block. But, but we do. We need, to, we need to look at the things that, that we look at, that, that, are, that are in, in the thing, in, the, in faith. You know, what, it, it's not, you know, you got confusing messages in faith. You know, you got people saying this and doing this. That's confusing, right? And because they're saying it, they think it's just gonna happen when they need to be doing it. It's not just saying, it doesn't say faith comes by saying, does it? Faith comes by hearing, right? You guys with me tonight? Yes. So we got to look at those things. So you got to look at the, at the messages that are, that are within your circles. Because I'm not saying they're ravenous wolves, but there are things that can be a mixed message. Keep going in where we were. You shall know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs from thistles? In other words, you're not going to get grapes out of a thorn bush. Right? Well, you're not going to get good out of bad. No. You, you can't reach into bad and hope good comes out. And see, people have been lying about God on that all the time. Say, oh, he, he'll, he'll, he'll knock you down so you can look up. No. That's a confusing message. Right? <laughs> because it doesn't fit with the book. It, it fits with your doctrine and your theology. Now you can explain away your problem with something you've misused. But, but it's, not, it's, no, it's not truth. And you can't make it truth just by fitting it into your life. Amen? You don't, you don't make truth, truth by fitting it. It was truth before it got there. You put it in your life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Say, I must have been messed up when I thought God did that because he's good. He couldn't have. That's right. right? So right. Well, something stupid I did or somewhere stupid I went to or just something I didn't know about. Yeah. Right? Sometimes we just don't know. Right. But it would be pride to say it had to be God because I couldn't have messed up. Well, it'd be beyond pride. It'd just be plain stupid right there. Amen. Verse 17. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. If it's a good thing, then it's bringing forth good fruit. Amen. If, if we're talking about healing and, and the blood of Jesus and, and the goodness of God, then good things should be coming out. 
Amen? Amen. Good things should be happening. If we're teaching the truth of God's goodness in truth, we're not changing it to fit our lifestyle. We're not changing it to fit our experience or our circumstance. We're teaching truth. And every time we do, good comes out of it. Because only good can come out of truth. Amen? Amen. And, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. And if you take something and add it to the good word of God, you've corrupted it. Mm. Amen? Remember in uh, Matthew 15 where he says you, you have forsaken the commandment of God for your tradition. That word commandment means word communication. You, you, you have pushed aside the, the communication of God so you could hear what you wanted. Amen? And that's how you get false things and, and mixed messages within the body of Christ. Within, you got people that think they're in the right place because they're doing the work. We're doing, in fact, is that's what it talks about next, I think, isn't it? Go to the next verse. Just keeping them in the Bible, aren't I? Verse 19. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Verse 21. Not everyone. Now see now, this is a mess with a whole bunch of theology here. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, you could pull that out and, and, and say, oh, I need to do the will of God, and you do, but you don't need to pull it out. This is in the middle of a message. Jesus started preaching a big, long message in Matthew 5. Amen. Amen. Remember, he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Talks about loving your enemy Hallelujah. and being merciful and not judging. Well, I think that's the will of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I think that's the will of the Father. Uh, and, and that's what he's saying. Not everybody just says, Lord, Lord. It's the ones that are doing what I've put ability in them to do. Amen? It's the ones that are doing what I've asked. It's the ones that are doing my words. Amen? Amen. Keep going. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Works. In thy name have we not cast out devils? Works. In thy name have we not done many wonderful works? Amen. Works. Hallelujah. Have I? Did I? Didn't I? You know what you need to do to go to heaven? Confess Jesus as Lord. Yep. And turn. Yep. Not prophesy. Not cast out devils. If you receive Jesus as Lord. If he's first place in your life, like, it, like Jesus preached about in Matthew 6. If you're loving your enemy, if you're being merciful, if you're being kind, these are the things that will naturally happen in your life. Right. They're not works to get you into heaven. Amen? Amen? You know, that's like saying, didn't I sit on the front row? Right? Didn't I teach Sunday school class? Lord, didn't I have three Bible studies a week? Where was your heart in all of that? See, that's what God wants to know in everything we do. Where was your heart? Because where your heart was is where your work was. If your heart was in the work, then that's all it was, was work to get to heaven. If your heart was in God, then the works were performed out of love for Him and love for the people. Amen? Amen. And, and when, you're, when your works are born out of love, when, you're, when, you're, when the things you do are born out of mercy. You, do, you no longer look at how they got where they are. You only look at how to get them out. Amen? Amen. You're not doing it to get to heaven. You're doing it because you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that it, that's why we need to remember who we are. Right. Because we should be excited every day. We're going to heaven one day. We are children of God right here on the earth full acceptance by the Father, lavished His love on us and called us sons of the Most High. Amen? And because He did, He put that in us and He said, now you go, use what I had and do what I did. 
Don't do it to get to heaven. You're already going to heaven. Do it because you're going to heaven. Do it because you know me. Do it because you have my heart. Do it because you have my love. Do it because it's in you to do. You have the very compassion that I did it with in you. Right? It, it changes our vision. It changes our ears. It changes our words. It changes how we act and react to every situation because we're not doing it so we can say, Lord, look what I did. We're doing it because we said, Lord, look what you did. Amen. Yes. And his works will always glorify him. Yes. Right. He, it, it, when you go back up to chapter five, he didn't say, let your light shine before men so they can see what you did. No, no. so they can glorify God. They'll see your works. And they'll glorify God because if your light is truly shining, it's shining a big radius of God. And it's pointing people to His goodness. It's pointing people to His ways, to His, to His mercy, to His love. It's not giving you any credit. The only credit you got is you were an open vessel because you wanted to love just like He did. Amen? So not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, what's he going to say? He says, I don't know you. I, I, I don't know you. Because I don't know people by their works. Yeah. I know people by their words. Did, did, did you accept me as a Savior? Did you confess me as Lord? Did you believe that I was raised from the dead? Were you, were you washed in the blood? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's me. That's me. And now my works should follow that. Yes. Amen? Amen. And, and, then, and then I'm doing the will of the Father. Because remember, if you just go on right here. Go, go back where we were. He says, then I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Keep going. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine. What, what sayings is he talking about? He just preached. I don't know how long it took him to preach chapter 5 to chapter 7, but this is the culmination of one message. And he says at the end of that message, the one that hears my sayings and does them. Those sayings go everywhere from mercy to compassion to, to being kind to the unthankful to loving your enemies to being pure in heart. I mean, you got to read the message. It's a great message. He teaches us how to fast. He teaches us how to pray. He, he says, if you, the, the one that I'm looking for is the one that's doing everything that I just told you. Because that's the will of God. I just told you the will of God. I, and not once did it mention prophesy. Not that there's anything wrong with prophecy. Prophesy, it's, that's great. But that's not what it said. Right? It didn't talk about any of the three things that these guys talked about. Yes. It talked because without these other things, none of that matters. Prophecy is confusing when you're not merciful, when you're not kind, when you're not walking in love. You can start prophesying some things that ain't good. Sure. I remember I used to have somebody, I don't even say, but every time they prophesied, it was something doom and gloom. I'm like, I don't want to hear their prophecy anymore. <laughs> Did you know that most of it didn't happen? The fact is, I don't think any of it ever happened. I mean, just because you want Jesus to come back tomorrow ain't going to make him come back tomorrow. You know why? Because he's doing the will of his father. He's being patient. Right? Because <laughs> his father's patient. He's wanting the fruit of the earth, the precious fruit. Amen? Amen time and space for people to come to know Jesus Christ. Amen? And so, so these are things that we can do that, that make that other stuff, the prophecy, good. Why? Because I'm compassionate and kind. I'm full of love. I prayed for my enemies. I love the unthink. I'm I have the heart of God. If I have the heart of God, I can prophesy the heart of God. If I don't have the heart of God, I'll prophesy opinion. You ever notice if somebody starts talking about their opinion, it bears the fruit of their opinion, 
right? Because you can't make a good tree just because you sound good. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, you can have, you can be so entertaining, right? And have such a fine sounding argument. You can do these things on such a level that, that people really get listening to you. But if they'll stop for a minute, they'll say, wait, none of that makes any sense. Right? And it doesn't line up with the word of God. And, and it's not lovely at all. Right? And, and even, even people who say good things. You, you got to watch all these things because the devil said good things to Jesus. He quoted scripture. Scripture's good until it gets corrupted by bad. Amen? Amen. <laughs> right? He, said, he, he quoted, he said, jump off of there because it says he gets his angels charge over you. That's truth, right? Yep. Not when he says it, because he can't say anything that's not a lie. Why? Because he had to add to it first. You jump off there. Right? If you're the son of God. Tempting God. And see, that's the thing. People can say good things with a wrong heart, and it won't bring forth good fruit. The heart is the, heart is the key to the mouth speaking in power. Because if you start speaking from your mouth evil things things that aren't God, things that aren't born out of love, things that aren't born out of the peace or the joy or the, or the, the remembering of what he's done for you. Amen? Then, then, they're, then they're flattering words. That's all they are, flattering words. You can, you can tell God how good he is trying to get something from him. Hmm. Didn't you used to do that to your parents? I remember when we got in trouble, we'd be in the back of the car, and my dad would say, when you get home, you're getting a spanking. Yes, we got a spank, and my dad's already in heaven, so you can't sue him or anything else. So. Can't call DFS on him. I'm okay. I'm okay. It kind of helped me, I think. There's a couple times I probably really needed a better one than I got. Right? But he'd say, he'd say, when you get home, I'm spanking, I'm spanking all four of you. <laughs> like, like, all of a sudden, my flattering lips came out. Man, Dad, you sure are a good driver. Man, you passed that guy like crazy. That was good, Dad. Man, you could find a thousand good things Dad was doing all of a sudden because you're just hoping somehow he'll forget that when you get home, you're going to get a spanking. Which he loved me enough not to forget. <laughs> right? And sometimes we do those things with God because we know that we've been someplace. But the thing to have done is do exactly what the son did when he came, the prodigal son did when he came back. I'm not worthy to be called your son. What does dad say? What does dad call him right after that son? But he didn't come in there trying to fool him. He came in there with where he'd been and said, look, to dad, help me. I'm not worthy. I've done things. That I shouldn't have done. I've been places I shouldn't have been doing things I shouldn't have been doing. And his dad said, son, you were lost. Now you're found. You were dead. Now you're alive again. Amen. Amen. He, didn't, he didn't even take a second. Amen. Yep. God is so good. And he, and he wants to put that in us and, and show us that, that we are his children and that we are his ability here in the earth. And, and if we'll allow him through us to do things, we can do them, that the things that aren't works, they're, they're deeds. They're, they're deeds. They're, they're good deeds. Works aren't good deeds. Deeds, good deeds. Amen. And, and when, when you're done, people glorify God. Why? Because people got healed. People got saved. People came back to Christ. People's lives were changed. Their words and their, and their eyes and their ears, everything about them changed because they experienced the love of God. They didn't experience a prophecy, right? They, they didn't experience being, having a devil cast out of them. They experienced the love of God. All those things with the love of God would be an experience of the love of God. But as a work, they're just a work. Amen? That's, that's helping us already. I like it so much. Amen? Because, because we want to get to the place to where two things stand out in our lives. When we walk in love and when we don't. If, you, if we get to those two places... Because I, I'm, I'm at a place where I notice it now. I'm like, 
because God will catch me when I don't. He'll say, well, that wasn't love, was it? Like, oh. Sometimes he makes me go back and apologize. Sometimes he says, now that was love. And you're like, oh, yeah. And how do I know? Because I saw the results of it. And it didn't glorify me. It glorified him. Amen? Those are the two things that we want to notice when we walk in his will and when we don't walk in his will. And we notice the difference. And we don't, and we don't like one and we love the other. Amen? And, and when, he, when, when we go to him and say, Lord, Lord, aren't I yours? He says, yeah, you're mine. We don't have to, we're, not, we're not trying to describe what we did for what, what we did while we were in the earth. We, we, we didn't do anything. We only took his ability and, and acted like him. Amen? And, and showed his glory to whoever would look at it. Because we want to we walk in it. We want to notice. It's good to notice when you do things that are, you know are his will. And it's good to notice when you do things that are not. Because that will keep you from doing those things because you really enjoy being merciful. You know, the other day we were doing something and, I, and immediately I had judged something. And, and, I, and, and in my spirit, me and Kim were driving down the road. God said, boy, that was quick to judge. I'm like, Ooh. I want to know. Don't you want to know? Because we're not supposed to be quick to judge. We're supposed to be quick to hear. Right? Quick to hear. If I'd have, if I'd have just shut up. Quick to hear means this. You, your ears were faster than your mouth. And with me, that's taken some time because I was quick draw on the mouth. I used to tell Nancy uh, when she was the secretary here, I said, never listen to the first thing I say. That's, that's not good, okay? It's funny, but not good. So I got to where that's not true. I want to stop long enough to hear so I actually have something to say. Because until I hear... I got nothing to say. So I want to be really quick to hear. Well, I guess we'll just go there since that's where we got to. James, where's that James 1? It's in, it's in these scribbles right around here somewhere. I'll find. James 1. Right around maybe verse 26. We can go up from there. I don't think it's 26. I think it's above that. <clears throat> It's in a scribble in this. Yeah, go way above that. <laughs> go, to, go, to, go to 15. 19. Go to 19, Karen says. 19? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Now, if you're swift to hear, the other two will come. You got to do them in order. God never just says things. He, he never just, he, he, where you can just change the order. Well, I'm going I'm to speak a little slower. No, you're going to have to hear a little quicker before you speak a little slower. It's going to take, take some practice to listen. In other words, stop for a second. You know, Brother Moore is one of the first people to start teaching because I, I'd ask him something and I just might not get an answer. But then later he'd give me one. Why? He didn't have one right then. And he's not going to give me the one he doesn't have. Mrs. Moore once told me, she said, quit giving people answers that God didn't give you because you can't help them with it. You know what kind of answers those are? Prophecy. Casting out demons. Right? Those are, those are the Lord, Lord works. Amen? Amen. They, they glorified, oh, that Dave, he's wise. Man, listen to the words that Dave said. You best not. It's not going to help you. Amen? But, but these are things you learn. You learn to listen. Listen quick. Before your mouth can sh say a word, get your ear in gear. Amen? Because your mouth's got nothing to say till your ear hears. And if your mouth, if your ear hears and your mouth speaks only what your ear heard from God, then you won't get angry. You'll be real slow to anger. Why? Because you're operating in him now. And he's slow to anger. Plentiful in mercy. mercy. Amen? He doesn't get mad very... He, he does, it's hard to make him mad. You know, people read the Old Testament and say, he's mad all the time. If he was mad, as they, as he, they wouldn't even have been there. 
right? He's merciful. Amen. He's merciful. Me and you, we get mercy every day that we don't know about because we walk around throwing fits. You know, we're just, people look at the children of Israel. Go to, go to Psalm 78. We'll come back to this. Children of Israel. When they wanted something, what'd they do? They whined. They didn't ask. You know, when, you're, when your kids whine, you don't give them something, right? I don't want to answer, Dad, can I have that? No. <laughs> but when she just asked, I'd say, yeah. Every time she just asked, I said, yeah. But when she whined, and especially like they used to, they said, who's going to give us meat? <laughs> I remember when we were slaves, we got fish and leeks and onions, and, and you were slaves. <laughs> but, but that's what you remember when your heart's not with God. When your heart's not with God, you can't speak truth because your heart's in the wrong place. So even when they said, remember when they told Moses, right? It was right after this. They wanted some meat, and they said, they said oh, you go to God. And whatever he says, we'll do it. You, you, we can't go to him. You go to him. Whatever he says, we'll do it. That lasted about as long as it took to get it out of their mouths. Right? Because the next thing you know, they're like, well, who's going to give us meat? Where are we going to get meat from? And God, God gave them meat. Gave them all the meat they wanted, and then something's coming out their ears. Why? Because that's not, what if they'd have just asked? God is so kind. We don't have to try and fool him with some phony, oh God, if you just heal me. If you just heal me, who will heal me? He already healed you. Yes. He already healed you. He likes saying, if you just save me, Lord, if you just save me, I just want to be saved. You Confess Jesus as Lord, believe that, Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be. Amen? Amen? And then you don't keep crying for salvation. And, and that, where did I say go? 78? Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verse uh, 36. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. What did they say? They said, oh, we'll do whatever you say. You just get the word from God, we'll do it. He's God. He's, he's consuming fire. What were they doing? They're doing what I was doing in the back seat, trying to get my dad not to spank me. Right? Right? Yeah. right? I just wanted to, to change my dad's mind or, or get his mind off track, or, but it make him realize that I'm not remembering how good he's been to me. That, that's what they're not remembering, how good. He already drug them through the Red Sea. I mean, goodness sakes, you would think, of course, you'd think the same thing of all of us. When God does something so big, think, you know, people look at the Red Sea, that, that's not nearly what it took to save you. It took Jesus, the biggest thing that ever, the biggest miracle of all time happened to save you and me. Amen. The Red Sea was small compared to what Jesus accomplished. He went and took our place and took sin and eradicated it. Amen. And he healed us at the same time. And, and, he, and he came back to where every person that was ever born could experience this very same thing. The Red Sea is small. But if you're walking through it and there's a wall of water on both sides, you might think you might remember that. Before you said, how can we get meat? He just broke open the sea and you walked on dry lands. Probably he can find meat. But why not ask? Why not ask instead of wine? Amen? Because they were quick to speak and slow to listen. <laughs> when you're slow to listen and quick to speak... You'll say the wrong things because you're not hearing it all. But he tells why it happened. He tells why it happened the way it happened. Next verse. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. They didn't, like, they didn't, they didn't respect his word, 
and their hearts were far from him. When, you, when your heart's not with him, you won't say the right thing. You won't speak the right way. You won't go about the things of God in the right manner. You'll try to get him. You know, you've got people all the time. I know my mom, when she passed away, and still to this day, people say, I wonder why God didn't heal her. He did. And not because she's in heaven. She didn't receive healing on this earth. You got, she didn't need it in heaven. There's no sick people there. Right. <laughs> Amen. But she was still healed, as, as healed as I am, as healed as anybody is. And, and, but the thing is, we're asking the wrong question. Why? Because our heart's not grasping what Jesus did. It's not grasping the love of God. It's not grasping the things that God wanted for us. It's grasping how like, she was such a good lady. And she was. She's a great lady. I still don't know anybody about, like her today. I still don't know anybody like her. But that's not why you get healed. You were already healed. Amen. Before she was a great lady, she was healed. Glory. Before she was a great lady, she spanked me. She cussed at me. She did, man. She called us all kinds of names before she got saved. <laughs> Whew, that lady could do it. I remember both ladies. There was two of them. And she was flat mean. Wore a belt around her neck. <laughs> All day long. When she got saved, when she committed her life to God, never again. Never again. Never saw her unhappy again. Never saw her cry. Never saw her down. Never saw her speak evil to somebody again. Not saying she didn't. I didn't see it. I don't think she did. Why? Because she got so engulfed in the love of God that nothing else mattered. And everything that she wanted to do was through him. And that's the way we want to get. That, that's, that's what we're trying to receive is that love, is that peace, is that joy, is that ability, is that it, to, to where our reason for doing everything is because he has our heart. When he has your heart, you're producing good fruit all the time. Why? He has your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You will begin to speak good all the time if good is what's in your heart. So if your heart is his, you'll have the good things of God. You'll be bearing good fruit, right? Now what it says, a good man out of the good treasures that are in his heart brings forth good. It's real simple. An evil man out of the evil treasures in his heart brings forth evil. What we say is our heart. You have to, you, your heart has to be his. And then you don't flatter him with your lips. You don't lie to him with your tongue. You worship him with your mouth. Yes. Amen. Look at Proverbs, uh, um, Proverbs 16.23. And because the, his heart wasn't all right, this is the very chapter in Psalm that talks about that, that they turned back and tempted God and limited him. What they, they kept him from doing all the good things that he had planned for them. And, and they, they, they kept themselves out of the, most of them, out of the promised land. Why? Because their hearts weren't with him. It goes back to their hearts weren't with him. In, in Hebrews 3, he calls it an evil heart of unbelief. Amen? And, and, and that's what he's talking about. He's talking about an evil heart that doesn't trust in his goodness, doesn't trust in, who he, in the words that he's told you. Amen? And, and when you don't trust in that, you won't get that. You'll try to get it through manipulation, flattering lips and lying tongues, but you can't have the things of God because you can't bear good fruit from, an, from a corrupt heart. Amen? Amen? Proverbs 16, 23 says, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth. So your heart is designed to override and cause your mouth to say things that it should say. Amen? Amen? Yep. And it adds learning to his lips. Look at it in the Young's Literal. I like it in the Young's Literal says, the heart of the wise causes his mouth to act wisely. Right? So if you're, if you're the wise, which you are, if you know Jesus Christ, or at least we should be, right. right? Then we decide what our mouths say. People say, I just couldn't help myself. Oh, but you could. 
right? Because, you know, it says no man can tongue the tongue. The Holy Spirit can, right? Because even in this that we're getting ready to read, if we go back to James, it talks about bridling. If, if anybody's religion and he doesn't bridle his tongue, his religion is in vain. So what's he saying? He's saying there's a bridle you can put on it. And if you do, you can say the right things. People say, I just couldn't help myself. Well, you could. I, I've done that. I've been there. I bet everybody in here has done that. They said, I couldn't help myself. You could have. You chose not to help yourself. Better yet, you chose not to let the Lord help you. Why? Because you were quick, quick to speak, right? Slow to hear because God would stop you. I mean, literally just recently, I've been about to say something. God says, nope. Oh. And we say, no, we just know. We shut it down right there. Why? God said no. I'm getting, I'm getting to know that he's smarter than me. <laughs> it's only taken 58 years or so. We're all growing. From wherever you're at, you're still growing. Amen? But, but, the, but, the, but the heart of the wise, your heart, my heart, it can cause your mouth to act wisely. It can make it act the way your heart knows. Amen. We don't have to act unwisely. We can act wisely. We can speak wisely. We can say wisely. We can do the things that God wants us to do. We can be doers of the word, right? Not hearers only. Doers speak right things. They follow right words. Amen. Go back to James 1. Is that where we were? James 1. Whatever verse we were at. 19. Yeah, be, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. In, fact, in other words, you getting mad isn't going to cause God to do, do something. It's not going to. Right? It doesn't say Abraham got angry and he was imputed righteousness. Right? Abraham got mad. God just imputed it to him because he didn't want to see his fit. <laughs> you know, I've done that with my kid before because I just knew she's going to throw a fit back when she was little. And I, that's really a bad thing. You, that's how you mess them up. Let them throw their fit all day long. They don't get nothing until they ask right. Then they can have everything. She did. She had everything. And more. <laughs> Glory to God. Still getting her stuff, and she's 28. Thank you, Lord. Verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity, and naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Verse 22. And be doers of the engrafted word that is able to save your souls. If you're being a doer of this engrafted word, then that word's producing fruit. You're now got good word in you, bringing good word out. Good man out of the good treasure stored up in his heart. How where is it stored up at? In his heart produces good things. If you're going to be a doer, you're going to be doing good things. Why? Because your heart's right. Your heart's right. You receive the engrafted word into your heart. And now you're doing things. You know, when I first started believing for prosperity, I wanted prosperity. What I found was God. And when I found God, prosperity came. But until I found God, Amen. love, there was no, there's no such thing as prosperity. I couldn't have had enough money to be prosperous. When I found God, I found what I really wanted. Glory to God. I found peace. That's right. I found joy. I found out that none of that stuff mattered unless I had him first. Amen. And that, that's what he wants. He wants a heart. Because if he can have a heart, then out of that good heart, he can produce good fruit. And the good fruit will produce in other people's lives. And it will help people because we're doers of his word. What goes right back to where we started in Matthew 7, he that does the will of my father. He's a doer. A doer of the things that I preached in, in Matthew 5 through 7. A doer of all those things. And if he's a doer of those things, then he's, then he's doing my will. He's producing good fruit. If he's doing anything else, it's corrupt. 
He's doing it for the wrong reason out of a wrong heart. Amen? We've got to watch our hearts, guys. That's what the devil's trying to mess up. When he gets someone offended, what's the, I mean, here's the mixed message. What's wrong? Nothing. That's a, mixed, mixed, that's a real mixed message to me right there. You said nothing, but it sure sounded like something. Right? And your face looked like something. Now, did something offend you? I never get offended. <laughs> and then they leave. Those are all mixed messages. Everything they said doesn't go with what they did. If you're a doer of the word, everything he said goes with what you did. Amen? Because if you do what he did, you can't get offended. If you, if you, if you read the scriptures, the, if you listen to the message preached in Matthew 5 through 7 and do it, you can't get offended. How do you get offended loving your enemy? Right? You can't do it. You can't be offended doing what Jesus did and ask us to do. And then, and not only ask us, gave us the ability to do. Amen? Amen. It's an impossibility. But, but you're going to get a mixed message when you start putting your spin on things. Because the next thing you do is you, you decide, well, I can justify this. You know, you don't know what they did. You know, I, I don't like the way this happened. I don't like the way that happened. This should have never happened. And maybe it shouldn't, but you being offended shouldn't have happened. You can't fix this because now you're broke. So even, even if it shouldn't have happened, getting offended over it won't fix it or won't help it. Good fruit is the only thing. But so it doesn't say overcome evil with evil. Right? <laughs> It says, don't be, it, says, it says overcome evil with good, and it says don't return evil for evil. Yeah. Amen? Is that, that, that's who we are. Well, it's, not, it's not what we do, it's who we are. And because of who we are, these things just happen. Because of who we are in Christ, because we're the love of God, because we have the joy of God, because we're full of all the goodness of God, then all the good things happen. Why? Because we're producing good fruit. Where were we in James? What verse were we on? So I didn't write any of these down. I just jotted it on the side of my page and so I don't know. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. What? If you're only hearing, did you ever notice that you can get somebody to repeat the word but maybe never do it? <laughs> right? You can, what if, what if, what if, uh, what if Abraham would have said, well, I know, God, that you just told me to go and sacrifice Isaac. But before that, you told me that in Isaac, all the seed would, you know, the whole world would be saved. And it's the Dave translation. But so I'm not going to do it because I'm going to just stick with what you said. But then you don't go with what God said. Right? You can believe what he told you and continue to do what he says. Right? That's what Abraham did. He did what he told him while he continued to believe what he said. How, what he, he, he believed it so strong that if he would have carved up Isaac, he was fully expecting Isaac to come back from the dead because that's what God would have had to do to, to keep all his promises true. But, but he didn't stop that's why he was called a friend of God, because he was quick to hear, slow to speak. He, did, he didn't say, uh, wait a second, God, whoa, 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 I'm not even hearing this. God, that can't be you. Right? I mean, that, think about Peter. What did he say? Jesus said, I'm going to be, you know, given up on a cross, and Peter stops him and rebukes him. <laughs> and, God, and Jesus calls him Satan. Well, he didn't call Peter Satan, but he said, stop that. Well, Peter was, thought he was saying something good. But he was getting in the way of salvation. If Abraham would have not listened, then he would not have fulfilled what God said when he said it was imputed to him righteousness because he believed. That's, he believed so strongly that he'd just do anything God said to do. Wow! Now there's a novel idea. What if we believe so strongly that we just did what God said what to do? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so he says, by his stripes you're healed. Keep listening. What's the next step? 
We believed that when Kim went through chemo and, and breast cancer. We believed that by his stripes you were healed. And then we kept listening. Okay, God, what do we do? What do we do now? And then he says, do this. And he confirms it with people over us. And we do it. And God shows up. Amen. People say, that's not a miracle. It is to me. I got to just, all I got to do is make my block. (laughs) Right? That's all I got to do is make my block. I don't even have to tell you how to make your block. That's why you're there. You can make your block. God's given you the ability to make that block. If you miss that block, I'll try and help you after I'm done with mine. (laughs) But what I have to do is be quick to listen. Not quick to speak. Because the first thing you want to do when something like that comes up, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. God said this. Yes, he did. Believe it. Now, what else is he saying? You stop there, you'll miss it all. You'll go to heaven, but you'll miss it. A lot of people there early. You know, honestly, I think if my mom would have listened earlier, she'd probably still be here. Honestly, I think that. She chose a different way. She's happy. I'm okay. Right? But you got to listen. You got to listen to the whole thing. Sometimes God says, this is what I'm going to do. And then he says, hey, by the way, go sacrifice Isaac. You say, no, God, you, that can't be God. He'd never tell me to do that. He, would ne- he already gave me this promise. He, w- he wouldn't say go to the doctor after he already told me I'm healed. Wouldn't he? He knows you better than you know you. He knows right where you're at and right what you can do. And he works according to your faith, not according to your mouth. Now, if your mouth will start working according to your faith, then you'll be in good shape. But sometimes my mouth worked before my faith. And I was trying to get faith by saying instead of faith by hearing. That's why I said be quick to listen, because you're going to get faith by hearing. Because once we knew what we were supposed to do, we had perfect faith. Not in doctors, in God. Amen? Amen. We had perfect faith. I never, I never even questioned it after that. Yeah. Ever. Didn't have a doubt in my heart. Didn't have an anxious moment. Didn't say, I wonder, I wonder if this is going to work. I didn't have to wonder. God, God gave us a word. He, he told us what to do. And, and so we knew what to do. So we did it. Thank you, Lord. Three years now. Five years, man, I am getting older. Not because I forgot, because it's been five years. Because <laughs> I don't keep track of that. I don't, I don't need a date for that. It's been a long time and she's still clear. Why? Because God healed her. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Still in, still in James 1. What, what verse were we on? Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. If you only hear the word and you never do anything, then you'll be deceiving yourself. You'll you'll quote it all the time, but you'll never do a thing about it. Amen. You can quote the word all day. I I quoted it for seven years while I was broken, getting broker. (laughs) And none of those quotes meant anything until I found God. And then... I began to bear good fruit. Why? Because I gave him my heart. My heart wasn't to his word. It was to him and his word. Amen. And and when when I gave him my heart, his word had value because now I'm not saying it to get to the prosperity. I'm saying it because I love him. Amen. And no matter what else happens, I'm going to have him. And his word is true. And his true word brought me out. And I didn't, even have to, I didn't even have to quote prosperity verses after that. I did quote some just because I like them, but came out without all that. Fact is, went to work for the church instead of working the business. And the business prospered. 
Well beyond what I ever thought it would, or even wanted it to actually, because that would have been too much work. <laughs> right? What, I just wanted enough to, you know, have all my toys and do whatever I wanted. Bad vision brings up bad fruit. Amen? Amen. Next verse. If any of you be a hearer of the word and, a doer, and not a doer, you're like a man beholding his face in a mirror. In Dave translation. Before he beholdeth and goeth his way, straightway forgets. People that don't do anything forget. When you don't do something, you forget. Why? Because there's no value to it. There's no, there's no value to what you're saying if you're not doing anything. You have to put feet to your faith or you'll never have what you're saying. You, you have to follow God. You have to begin to do what he says. You'll forget. Well, that's, that's what he said. He said in the, with the children, they, they were actually back in, I'll read the verse. You don't have to go there. In Psalm 78, that was their problem right at the end of it. It said, they remembered not his hand. What'd they do? They forgot. They remembered not his hand, nor the day that he delivered them from the enemy. They, they didn't remember. Amen. That, that we're, we're to remember. That's why you have to be quick to listen. Listening causes you to remember. God will remind you. He will. You, you could be down and, and God will stop you for a minute. And he'll say, what are you down about? I'll say, I'm just not having a great day. You're having an awful, you're having a great day. You're saved. You're born again. You're healed. You're going to heaven. You're, you're my child. God's the best encourager ever. You want to get encouraged? Let God encourage you for just a minute. Right. Amen. He'll remind you of everything he's done for you. Yes. And he'll remind you of what he's put in you. And he'll say, go do this. And it's always something for somebody else. And the minute you go do something that's outside of you, you become well. You become strong. You beca Why? Because that's your strength. The things that you do, through, that God does through you are what builds you up and keep you. They're what, they're what puts you on an on a all-time high. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not, I, I, can, I can be more than poor. I can be more than rich. I can do all things. I can operate in his love. I can operate in his joy. I can do all things. I can bear good fruit. I can bring myself to a place where the fruits that I'm bearing affect your life and bring you out and bring you up. And that's what God's trying to do. He wants you to have everything that he is. You, you should have all the qualities and characteristics of your father. When you walk down the street, they say, man, he walks just like his dad. He, he, look at him. He walks just like his dad. How? In love. Look at that. He, he didn't even notice when that happened. Those people, they called him names, and he just kept walking and loved them. What? Why? That's how God is. God's not affected. If he was, he'd be disappointed all the time, wouldn't he? He'd be a mess. He said, oh, my kids don't listen. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. He never does that. He's not disappointed in his choice. He called you to adoption. He called me to adoption. And when he did it, he's not one day disappointed in his choice. Amen. He's, he's not disappointed in his decision. He's not disappointed in what he did to get there. And he's never going to be disappointed. He's always going to love you. He's always going to think the best of you. Always going to push you to do more and to be greater because you are. You're more and greater than you know right now. You can do more than you, even if you did, if, even if you did a big thing for God today, there's way more than that yeah. because he put it in you to do. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. We better close somehow. I think I could keep going for a while. Whew. Go to James 3:12. And I'll start in 10. You can, you can catch me in 12. Out of the same mouth proceed the blessing, blessing and cursing. Blessing. You're blessed today? <laughs> Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not be. That's a mixed message. When, 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 and, he, and, he's even, and he even goes on to talk, you bless, you bless God and you curse man who God made in his same, in his same image. 
And he's saying this ought not be. What's he saying? There shouldn't be a mixed message here. You can't expect to grow good fruit by blessing God and, and good fruit by cursing your, your brother. You're going you're gonna to put, well, let's put it this way. If you had sweet water and you poured bitter water in it, what would it be? It would be bittersweet. <laughs> I don't like bittersweet. Right? I want it to be sweet. If you had bitter water and you poured sweet in it, it'd still be bittersweet. You're going to get one or the other. And that's what God's saying. He said, I want, you, you cannot out of the same fountain flow good and evil. Mixed messages. We, we need to quit having a mixed message. We need to quit listening to things that aren't true. We need to quit. You know, the, the greatest way to get faith, the way you get faith is by hearing. You know who you hear the most? You. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which brings grace to the hearer. You're the hearer. Start saying things that bring you up, that bring you out, that, that, that lift you, that bring you grace. You hear yourself before anybody else. Why? Because you have to hear it before you say it. Most of our corrupt communication affects us way worse than it affects anybody else. Why? Because it affects your heart. It separates you from God. The bad things we say, the evil things we do, the other things we allow in our ears and our eyes and our heart, they, they separate us, take us away from what God would have us do and how God would have us do it. Right? Because God, He has, he has a, a way for us to answer every person. Amen? In fact, is just go there and we'll close with Colossians 4, 6. Ephesians 4.29 is what I was quoting, but it's a similar verse. The, the communication that we need to hear that needs to fill our heart, it can't be corrupt communication, but also when we let our speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, then you know how to answer, how you ought to answer. It doesn't say you have, doesn't say you answer, it says you know how. Amen? When, when we give him our heart, then our speech then we can hear, we're quick to hear. Now we know how we should answer. Amen? Because before, we didn't know how to answer. We answered wrong. How to answer is what the demeanor, what demeanor will you answer in? Remember, Jesus answered questions in more than one demeanor. It'd be nice to think that he was just sweet all the time, but he chased people out of the temple, Right? And, there, and, he, and, he, and I'll, I'll, I'll think when he, said, when he called Satan, when, he, when Peter was there, he, he turned and said, get thee behind me, Satan. And that was how to answer. That speech was perfect the way it was, and it bore good fruit. Amen? And, and that's what we're looking to do. We, we, want, we want to communicate through the heart of God and bear good fruit in everything we do. We don't want to get mixed messages. When, when you let corrupt communication in, now you've got a mixed message. Amen? When you say something and you hear it, not only is it going to affect you, it's going to affect everyone else that hears it. When, when we allow the Word of God, when, when we twist it to fit our circumstance, then we, we corrupt it. And now it communicates to somebody else, and now their communication's corrupt. Amen? But when we stick to the truth, when we stick to the truth, when we won't allow corrupt communication to come out of our mouths, when we stick to what God said and we do it the way God said, then we only allow the things that God says to be said. And then it's not corrupt. It brings grace to the hearer, and it accomplishes great things in you and through you. Amen? Because God's good, and He's doing good things. Amen? Godly wisdom, that's where we were going in James, the, the wisdom that you get from mixed messages is worldly wisdom. It's, it's bad wisdom, right? It's, it's based on your flesh. Well, where is it? Let's just look at it. And we'll, it says, who is wise and endued among you? Endued with knowledge among you, let him show it out of good conversation, his words, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envying and strife. Where? 
in your heart. The heart's the key to this whole thing, guys. Your heart's God's, your fruit's good. Your heart's God's, your fruit's good. Your heart has bitter inbring and strife in it, then lie not against the truth. In other words, don't try and justify it. Don't try and, and say, oh, it's okay because of this. Or, or and, well, just, that's what they did in Matthew 15. They said, well, I don't have to give money to my parents anymore because whatever gift I give is to God, and so I don't have to do that. So they, they just forewent the word of God for their own traditions, right? And so they made the word of God of none effect. Amen? That's what worldly wisdom does. It descends not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. There's two kinds of wisdoms, right? The heart that's God's operates in good wisdom, right? It's because where there's envy and strife, there's confusion in every evil work, and I don't even have the rest of it. But the wisdom that's from God is first, pure, peaceable, gentle. These are all, these are all the qualities that are in us. This is the wisdom we walk in. This is, this is the fruit we bear. Fruit that comes from a pure heart. Where, where's the first time you heard that? Matthew 5. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they, say, they shall see God. Then they're peaceable. They're gentle. They're easy to be entreated. Full of mercy. And what do they do? They're full of good fruits. When God has our heart, good fruits are what we grow. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's a good God. He's doing good things. If I could have read my notes, I'm sure there was even some more good stuff in there. I'll, re I'll reprint them later. God's Word's infinite, and it just keeps going and going and going. Amen? He's doing good things for us. But you know, sometimes when we allow things of the world to corrupt the truth that we know, and then, then we gotta stop it ourselves. We gotta say, no, wait a second. I know truth. I've heard truth. I walk in truth. I choose truth. And so, you know, tonight, maybe, maybe you've walked around something. Maybe you got offended. If you got offended, you had to walk out of the truth. It's the only way to do it, guys, I'm sorry. I, I know that may offend you with your offense that you're already offended with. But you got to get over it because I love you and I don't want to, I know what it does. I've watched what it does to people. The very thing they are trying to hurt somebody with is killing them. And you can't do it. So may, maybe you're here tonight and, and something's happened and it's just gotten you off a little bit. Off a little bit is corrupt, right? A little bit of bitter water in your sweet water is more bitter water than you need, right? So get rid of, just throw that whole cup out. Just throw the whole cup out. We're gonna go to the new faucet, the one that only, only pours sweet water. Amen? Everybody raise a hand towards heaven. Pray this with me. Father God, I know you're good. I know that you saved me and you are in me. Your goodness, your mercy, every quality and characteristic of you, my Father, is in me. And I can, at all times, bear good fruit in every season, in every situation. Lord, show me where I've missed it, where I've allowed things to corrupt your word, or to corrupt my mind, or to send me in directions that you wouldn't have had me go. And Lord, I receive my new plan, your plan. I turn, I repent from going the wrong way, and I turn back to your truth in me. In Jesus' name, amen.